Hey, what's up guys? This is Vincent and in this Lightroom Classic tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use this HDR section right here as well as HDR merging with these three bracketed photos. So let's get started. So right now with these three photos, I'm just going to select one which is this regular or standard exposure photo that I took on Easter Island. And I'm going to click on HDR right here which is high dynamic range. And then you'll see once I click on HDR, there's a new panel that starts or opens up. And it's this right here, HDR limit, four stops. And then there's also this SDR, which is standard dynamic range. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So high dynamic range is just to increase the tonal range and just see more luminance and color values in an image to make it simple. The issue with HDR or HDR imaging is that you're not always able to see the entire color range or the color space in a LCD screen. So you need to keep that in mind when you're editing HDR photos because it does go to like a different type of file type, usually a 10-bit HDR file type. So once I click on HDR here, you can see the color or the color space changed here. So if I de-click it, it's changed here. And if I click it again, it's changed here. So let me show you the before and after. This is the before and this is the after of the HDR version. The one thing about an HDR photo is it does create or you do need to export in a different file type. So if I go here, click on export and then click on export here. And then I'm going to go to file settings. So usually you want to export on JPEG Excel or AVIF. If you want to do more further editing of your if you want to do further editing of your HDR file, then you should select PSD or a TIFF file. But I'll just click on cancel. So regarding the histogram, so the histogram has changed. You can see this SDR section here and the HDR section. Let's compare it to the histogram to the regular SDR version. And this is the HDR version. So with the HDR version, it includes four extra stops. There's one, two, three, and four. And we can visualize this HDR tonal range or the extra tonal range by clicking on visualize HDR right here. And then you can see these different colors of turquoise, the first stop, then there's blue, the second stop, then purple if there is in the image. And then there's this magenta color. So if you look at the image and I change the whites, you can see the different HDR tonal range or the HDR f-stops, which is added to this image file. So I'm just going to reset this and remove this visualize HDR. Another thing you can do is press the keyboard shortcut J or turn on this HDR clipping indicators. So this yellow section here, that represents what the screen is able to display correctly. And if I increase the whites, You'll see this red right here which is represented by this section of the histogram and this is what the screen cannot display correctly so i'm just going to remove this clipping indicators and i'm just going to correct this a little bit better just to show you turn it back on get rid of that red area here and this is the best the image could be displayed without going over the tonal range and if I want to make this image a little bit better, I'm going to increase the shadows. I'm going to add some vibrance and some saturation. So if we look at the before and after of the image, you can see this image looks a lot better than this image here, which is the SDR version without any editing. The one issue or another issue with the HDR file is most people don't have an HDR screen or are not able to display it on their photo viewing apps. So you need to be careful of that. Otherwise, you're going to run into compatibility issues. So one way to overcome that is by clicking on this preview for SDR display. And this is how this image will look on an SDR usually. And you can adjust it if you want to make it look better on an SDR file. And hopefully you guys can see my adjustments correctly. I am recording it on a screencast on a XDR display on my MacBook Pro. 
but if you're viewing it on YouTube without an HDR display or there could be compatibility issues, you may see these colors or the luminance values a little bit off. And that's one of the reasons I don't like or I don't want to use this HDR section in Lightroom Classic because you're just going to run into compatibility or a color space issues when you're viewing it in other apps, especially if other people or your users or customers are viewing the photo on a non HDR standard display or the color profile is not correctly rendered. So I'm just going to uncheck this and I'm going to reset this. And a better way to use HDR is to do HDR merging in Lightroom Classic. So I'm just going to click on these three photos here and then I'm going to go to photo. I'm going to go to photo merge and then click on HDR here. And now I can select to auto align the images, which will, it'll crop anything that's outside of the alignment area. And there's these auto settings. So after it merges the files, it'll automatically adjust the images using the tonal sliders here, as well as some of these other sliders, I believe. And then there's deghosting. So you can put no deghosting, low, medium, or high. I know the wind was pretty strong, so I'll just keep it on high. And there's this show deghost overlay to show the area of the ghosting. So I'll click that on. I'm not going to stack it and I'll click on merge. And now you'll see a new image that's created and merged with Lightroom Classic. And it's right here. So it's a, this is a new HDR DNG file. You can see it's been uh, noticeably improved. I can improve it more if I want. And that's pretty much it for HDR merging. But one thing is with these three photos, I could have used bracketing a little bit better. For example, I should have made this photo a little bit brighter. I should have made this photo slightly darker. Actually this one, this is the underexposed photo because sometimes you don't actually need to do HDR merging because if I go to this photo here, I can increase the shadows and I could start playing with the exposure to correct this and make this image look like this. If I click on reset, you can see this image almost looks like the same as this image. So this is the HDR merged image and this is the normal image. So sometimes with HDR, if you're within your tonal range and you're not shadows are not dark or if your skies are not overblown, sometimes you don't need to do HDR. And one thing I missed was I removed this from my collection. That's okay. And another thing is to do better or to improve your HDR, the best thing to do is actually use photomatics. This is, how, this is my HDR photo without any final adjustments. It does look a little bit overcooked, but it's much better than this photo here that had the, let me reset these settings, go to shadows, that looks better. So this photo is the Lightroom HDR photo, and this photo is the photomatics photo that I merged the three photos in. You can see if I go to here, there's export and there's this Photomatics Pro icon or this Photomatics Pro tool. So if you wanna do simple or quick HDR photography, just select three photos, three bracketed photos in Lightroom Classic and then go to photo, go to photo merge and merge the photos. But if you wanna have more control of the tone mapping or make your images pop more, then use a plugin like Photomatics Pro to make the image look wow. And there is another tutorial I made with Photomatics Pro and Lightroom Classic. If you want to check it out, check out the description. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe, check out my photography on Instagram. And as always, live easy, sleep breezy, and stay lovely.